Welcome to Jerry Berry's Fantastic Library. I am your host, Jerry B. Berry. Um, yeah, so today we're going to do journal stuff. No interviews today. Um, so the Fantastic Library will be about my reading bullet journal. And um, I need to like create some things for it. I need to fill some of it in so you can kind of get like a behind the scenes of how I make my reading bullet journal. Um, if you watch my reading wrap ups at the end of every month, so I have like a February and a March reading wrap up, um, and a soon coming April, no, what, what do I have? I have a January and a February reading wrap up, March coming soon. You'll like get sneak peeks of my reading bullet journal. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you guys like an insider look. And then I also got the Amanda Rachley Archer and Olive acrylograph pen set I have not opened it yet it's still in the plastic I just like took it out of the box I'm very very excited so I'll show you guys these I'll show you really quick how I use my acrylograph pens and how I get them primed and I'll give you some like reading bullet journal sneak peeks that's what we'll do today before we get started I wanted to tell you guys like some things about me um so right now I just finished you like I wanted, I wanted to talk about like what I'm watching, reading, listening, all those things. So I just recently watched Euphoria. I finished all of it, binge watched it. Super duper good. Super good. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend Euphoria on HBO. Um, what else? I watched the Oscars. That was super fun as always. Um, reading wise, I am currently reading the, Ob the Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin. It's the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. Um, what else? I'm kind of in a reading slump. I haven't been reading as much. I've been watching more shows. Um, so I'm slowly making my way through the obelisk gate and I may start something else instead and then like come back to it whenever I can really appreciate it because I do love it. But whenever I'm in like a, like a slump, I'm like not really paying attention. I'm just trying to get through it and I don't want to treat N.K. Jemison that way because she deserves better. So may switch it up. Um, let me think about what else is going on. Listening to wise, music wise, I'm really stuck on like Volbeat right now. And what else is always on my playlist? The song Grace Kelly by Mika. That one's playing a lot in my head all the time. And the Eurovision Netflix movie with Will Ferrell, that soundtrack is like always in my head as well. So that's music wise. Podcast wise, I just started Welcome to Our Show, which is the podcast about the New Girl show with Zoe Deschanel. Because um, I absolutely love New Girl. I it's one It's like one of my top three favorite shows of all time. So that's that. What else about Jerry Berry going on right now? I just rebranded my whole YouTube channel. So I started as a podcast and I just wanted to do podcast stuff. So it was called like Jerry Berry's Fantastic Library and everything was like Jerry Berry's podcast. And then I decided that I really like talking about other stuff. And so now everything is just Jerry B. Berry, right? So, um, cause I'm doing more than podcasts now. I'm doing uh, bullet journaling, regular journaling, and I'm doing like book reviews, but reading wrap ups. Um, yeah, I have a TikTok now. So I create TikToks and reels as like a daily hobby. I don't know why I got into it so hard, but I have, and I loved making them. So my TikToks and reels are full of like point of views, sneak peeks to episodes. Sometimes I rant on there about things I have issues with. So it's a fun time. And I was lucky enough to get Jerry B. Berry for everything. So, anything you want to find me on. TikTok, Instagram, Patreon, Venmo, Spotify, or Anchor. Is there anything else? Not that I can think of right now. All the Oh, Goodreads, if you want to follow me on Goodreads. Everything is at Jerry B. Berry, right? So just like Instagram.com slash Jerry B. Berry, TikTok.com slash at Jerry B. Berry. All the links are in the description box down below, all of them, all the time, right? 
Um, but that makes it super duper simple. The only thing that isn't really easy is my YouTube channel because you have to have 100 subscribers to make a custom URL on YouTube. I learned that recently. So I'm not going to be the person that says like and subscribe, right? I don't do that. We all know that I'm not into that. But if you are feeling like you want to help me make my URL easier to access, then you can subscribe to my channel simply for that purpose. Because once I get to 100, I will be changing that URL immediately so that it will be super easy for everyone to find all the things. Okay, that's my soapbox. That's that. So we're still the Frontastic Library. Our library has expanded to multiple sections, not just people books. We have actual books, journal books. We have a movie section now where I compare movies and books, right? So it's uh, serving a wider range of the community like most libraries do. That being said, we'll move on to the reading bullet journal video with the Amanda Rach Lee acrylograph pens from Archer and Olive. Yay! All right, so here is my current reading bullet journal. It's getting very chunky. Very, very chunky. But I'll do like a flip through for you guys after I talk about the Amanda Rachel Lee markers, the acrylograph pens from Archer and Olive. First of all, it comes in this amazing, really cute tin. So now all of my acrylographs will be able to be stored in here because right now they're just in a box, like a regular box. I'll show it to you. Ooh. I have literally never opened this, so I'm very excited. Oh my God, it comes with a super cute thank you note. How cute. I love Amanda Rachel Lee. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. I'm super glad it comes with this. So the first time I ordered acrylographs, or the first time I got acrylograph pens, I got them with my plant-based bride bullet journal kit. And it, I don't think it came with a how-to. This is awesome that it shows you how to do it. Because there is a little bit of priming that you need to do. But look at how gorgeous those pens are. Oh, my Lanta. She tested and named all of them. So I'm very excited. Look at how cute the writing is. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yes. Mellow, mellow tangerine. Stop. That is too cute. Okay. So the basic idea with acrylographs is to shake because they are paint pens. So you have to shake them really good. And then you have to press down on the tip of the acrylograph. I'll show you in a second. But as a pro tip, you do not need to shake one at a time because you'll be here for approximately 47 years. If you hold all of these at once, you can shake all of them at the same time and you're going to save yourself so, so, so much time on priming these. But once you're done shaking them up really, 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 really good, then you can pull your cap off. Let's pick a colored one. This one looks good. What name is this? This is Rustic Brown. Okay, so then one, oh, and this comes, this back is pretty good for testing them too. I feel like you'd probably be able to wipe this off and reuse it, but either way, after you shake them up super good, what you're gonna do, anytime you think you're done shaking, you're probably gonna wanna shake it a little bit more. But then as you can see, there's no color in this marker yet. So there's no color in the tip yet. But what you do is you press this down a few times. If you don't see paint, put the cap back on. Shake it what shake it your mama gave you. And eventually the ink will start to flow or the paint, I should say. So it's already starting to get a little more pigment to it. And now it's primed and you can write with this bad boy. Oh yeah. Boom, done. And then usually what I do before I put them away for the day is I'll wipe them with a paper towel and then just put your cap back on, store them horizontally, which is why this tin is perfect because basically I'll just remove all of this cardboard and lay them in nicely. 
every time you order them, order the Acrylograph pens through Archer and Olive, you'll get extra nibs. That's your tip of your pen. If they start to get damaged over time or if they get too clogged, there you go, you have extras. Make sure you save them, don't throw them away. Keep an eye out for them, they're very important. I've had to replace a few from writing too vigorously or coloring too vigorously. So yeah, that's the basics. You can always check out Archer and Olive or um, their Instagram, and I think they even have YouTube videos on how to use them. I can always link it in the description as well for more maintenance tips, troubleshooting tips, everything like that. But yeah, so let's move on to the reading bullet journal and get some stuff set up in there. I'm excited about it. All right, so I'm super excited to show you my bullet journal. This is my March. You can see how I've colored in some of the other ones and filled them out. I tape a lot of notes and stuff in. I do a lot of doodles, a lot of washi tapes. So for now, I'm gonna fill in my thoughts and reflections on the help. Um, I did do um, a comparison with the help movie versus book. If you wanna watch that, I can link it below. I really loved the help. So I really loved the book. I really loved the movie. It made a really good impression on me. And obviously I had to write in like the world famous quote, you is smart, you is kind, you is important. I love that quote so, so much. And sometimes with my journal, I just freehand stuff like I did here. Sometimes I plan it out very carefully. Sometimes I jot stuff down on other pieces of paper and tape it in. Sometimes I don't. I decided to add some washi tape to this one. I don't know why I just loved that pattern of the washi tape and I really loved the rose on my other washi tape. I felt like it just fit nicely right there in that little corner. So stuck those little guys in there for some extra decoration. You'll get to see later some of the ways that I've done my previous setups as well in my in the other months in January and February. So right now I'm going to start setting up a bookmark. I got this idea from other people. I've seen it a couple times with reading bullet journals. I can't remember exact people at this moment, but there's a lot of YouTubers I've seen that make bookmarks for their reading bullet journals and they use them for many different things, but I'm gonna use mine for grid spacing because I set every single page up exactly the same for every book that I read. So I figure it would be easier than having to count all those squares every single time. I can just make this nice grid spacing bookmark that'll just live in my bullet journal so it'll look like a bookmark in an actual book and I'll decorate it and just have fun with it. And that way I just have to use it as a template to set up every page super duper quick and easy.
All right, so all I did was add some washi tape and some kitty stickers to finish it off, and it is all done. I have my grid spacing bookmark, and I am able to use it perfectly for what I needed to do super duper fast. Way faster than if I had to count all those little boxes like I usually have to, and I wish I would have done this faster. Now, if you're freaking out because I'm not using rulers, everything's going to be okay. You can always use rulers in your journals. Uh, I go through phases where I need every line to be straight, and other times I don't care if it's wonky and I like the character. Right now, I'm in a phase where I don't really want rulers, so all my lines are just very wonky. But that's one of my favorite things about bullet journaling is it'll just match the phase that I'm feeling that day. And that's why I love this bullet journal the most, because it's totally free. I need no consistency with it like I do in my regular bullet journal that I use every day. This one can be as fancy and free as it needs to be. I always use this stencil to add my little stars at the top. It's literally the only thing I use that whole stencil template for are these little stars. But I'm obsessed with them, so that's that. I try to like make every page kind of fit the aesthetic of the book that I'm reading um, based on like the colors or you can tell in the help I actually drew the, the same logo that's on the cover of the book and in the movie with that little purple symbol. So it just kind of depends on my mood. And now my grid spacing bookmark can just live there right in the beginning by my index and my key and behind my little bookshelf and my next project is to add a book series tracker and at first I thought I would glue a page over my day's red tracker since I don't really use it but I decided instead to just tape a page in so this will be a really cool tutorial if you've never thought to tape a page into your bullet journal it's really easy to do as long as you have <clears throat> some space along the edges to do so so I just lightly sketch everything out here so that I know the spacing all fits nicely. And basically what this will be for is to track the series that I read. So I've already started the Children of Blood and Bone series. It's supposed to be a trilogy. I've started the Broken Earth trilogy. I want to read Harry Potter. I want to read the series of Unfortunate Events. I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is technically part of a series. So I just want to track what I've completed and what I haven't and what's left. And I've been meaning to add this to my bullet journal for a really long time, but didn't quite know where to put it. So this worked out perfectly to just tape it in right here so that if I do decide to go back and use my um, the day's red tracker, I can totally go back and do that. Um, I just use masking tape. I use masking tape a lot in this bullet journal. I think it makes it look super crafty. I think it's super duper cheap and it's really easy to use. So all I have to do is kind of trim the edges to make sure that it matches up with the pages that are already there. And there you go. It's all taped in and ready to use. All I have to do is color it in. And that's it. Easy as that. You just added a page to your bullet journal. I made a bookmark. I added a page to track my series. Here's some examples of what my bullet journals looked like in the past. It's all similar, but kind of different. Very thick and chunky. I don't know that this will last me the whole year like I want it to. Thank you so much for watching my video about the my reading bullet journal it's like my baby I love it so 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 much I 
if my house were to catch on fire, I would run for my regular bullet journal and my reading bullet journal and my children. That's how I feel about them. Um, I hope you loved it. I hope you got some cool tips. Um, yeah, I'm hoping to finish up at least one more book for the month of March and then do my April reading wrap up and do some more book versus movie slash shows for you guys. And there's more interviews as always. And yeah, I'm having a good old time. Um, and I love creating things for you guys and follow me on all the social medias and the TikToks and all the things. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.